Idaho Falls Pediatrics, where you supporting kids in our community and sharing questions with Emmy. First off, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of your work. I seriously have read Mercy Watson books since I was a kindergartner, and I still do read them. We have we have some at home. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. Wait, here Ramona came over to say hello. Should I hold her up? Yeah, okay, hold on. Ramona, um, in many ways, even though she's a dog, is a lot like Mercy Watson because all she cares about is toast with a great deal of butter. So, yeah. <laughs> you purposely do that? Did I purposely do that? Make Purposely make the pig fall in love with toast? Or purposely only make the pig care about toast? Kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Did you purposely make the pig, uh, Mercy? Did you purposely make Mercy like Ramona? Oh, no. Actually, Mercy existed before Ramona, but it was when when I went to pick out Ramona from the puppy litter, she had a gleam of mischief in her eye that made me recognize her and see the, the resemblance to Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, guys, welcome back to Seven Questions with Emmy. Today I'm talking with a very special guest that I have read her stuff for such a long time. I'm talking with Kate DiCamillo. She is one of America's most beloved storytellers. She is a two-time Newbery medalist and is former national ambassador for young people's literature. Her new book is called The Puppets of Spell Horse, and it was backward, but here it is. And today I'm happy to be talking with her. Hi, Kate. Hi, hi, hi. It's so good to be talking with you, and I'm ready for all the tough questions. Okay, you ready? Let's start with yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. When did you know that you wanted to become an author? Um, It wasn't until I was in college that I became really, really obsessed with the idea. When I was younger, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Okay. Question number two. Can you tell me about your new book? I can tell you about my new book, which you have a copy and I have a copy, and it's about uh, five puppets, a wolf, a king, a girl, a boy, and an owl, and it's about them discovering the story that they're in. So basically, it's a book about life. Yeah. What makes a good story like this one and Mercy Watson and all of your other books? <laughs> what makes it good? What makes it good? This, when when the person who's telling the story puts their whole heart into telling the story, um, or also like with Mercy Watson, um, it, who the person who's telling the story keeps on laughing as they're telling the story because I think Mercy's pretty funny. So he is. <laughs> I live in Idaho. Have you ever been here and tried our famous potatoes? And what's your favorite way to have a potato? Um, I have been in Idaho once uh, in Boise. I did a, a signing in Boise. Um, and a potato, what is my favorite way to have a potato? Oh, wow. Anyway, I like French fries. I like baked potatoes. I like mashed potatoes. I like smashed potatoes. I like potatoes every way. Every single potato is good, no matter what. Yes. I've actually had someone I've interviewed had they um were at like a potato farm in Idaho and the farmer made them eat a raw potato. I've eaten a raw potato. My mother used to make me eat raw potatoes when I said I felt I didn't feel good because it's supposed to have antibiotic properties. Yep. Did it get help you get better? Yeah, yeah, here I am. Yeah. My mom's here behind the camera like <laughs> <laughs> It's you know it's a it wasn't bad tasting and if it stops you from getting sick I'm happy to do it so yeah yay potatoes. Uh, your book The Magician's Elephant was adapted into a movie, which I'll, I'm hoping more of your books get adapted into a movie. What was it like to see your work on the big screen? Um, it's super super exciting. You know, it's kind of like I write the book. Uh, alone in my room early in the morning then it goes out into the world and and hopefully people read it but then when somebody turns it uh into a movie it's like you said it's up there and it's a kind of like a dream that everybody can dream together it's a very exciting thing can you tell me about any more future fun products that you might pro projects that you might have 
I am always working because I'm happiest when I'm writing. Um, and so I'm working on some fairy tales. We've got another fairy tale that's about the same length as um, The Puppets of Spell Horse that will be coming next year. And uh, I've got one more Mercy Watson book that's going to come at the end of this year. It's called Mercy Watson is Missing. And uh, there's Ramona shaking. You can hear that. She's like, and I'm going to, and, and that's another project, Walking Ramona. Yeah. Yeah. Are you um going to, is this going to be your last Mercy Watson book or are you going to keep? Yeah, it is. You know, it's like, I would be happy writing about Mercy Watson um, for the rest of my life. But Chris Van Dusen, who does the illustrations, he's got lots of other projects that he's working on. So for a while, at least, that will be the last Mercy. Hopefully it's not forever, though. Yeah, that's exactly what I hope. Yes. Um, can you share a piece of advice that might help me and our audience? A piece of advice. Yeah, you know, there's a quote and there's a lot of um, disagreement about who actually originally said it, but it doesn't matter who said it because it's such a good quote. Be kind to everyone you meet for everyone is fighting a weary battle. So it's the, it's the kind of thing to imagine that like people present their, themselves one way and something, some hard thing is going on from them that you can't see on their face. So you should be kind to everybody that you encounter. Thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, it was super, super fun. And now Ramona's gone back to, to take a nap on the couch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And hey, don't forget, you have to eat a raw potato now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my brother is actually sick right now, but he's allergic to potatoes, so he can't have it. But... He's allergic to potatoes. Oh, wait, I forgot another great way to have potatoes. Can I say this before we yeah. go? You can take, you can uh, make a pizza with white sauce and put um, sliced potatoes on top of it, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I have tried a pizza with like normal everything, like cheese, but with um like peppers, I think, and olives, and I think was there pepperoni on it? Potato pizza. Yeah. I've been a pizza pie cafe. They, no, like the one in. Island Park. There might have been pepperonis on it with um like fried potato slices, and it was so. Oh, oh! So that's really nice to have the fried potatoes on there. Yeah, I yeah. support that. I support pizza and potatoes in any form, except I would not have eaten your pizza with olives on it. I don't like olives. I mean, it's not. I kind of may or may not have peeled off half of them because <laughs> I don't really like toppings, but I do like potato pizza. So. <laughs> All right, potato pizza. Thank you. Hey, whenever, great. if you are back in Idaho, let us know and we can get potato pizza together. Beautiful. It's a deal. It's a deal. Okay. It's a we deal. can't shake through here, but like just. I was going to say, we're, but we're shaking. We're shaking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proudly supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.